several major enterprises have ruled to terminate their dealings with the YouTube channel after their advertisements appeared in videos rife with comments by pedophiles. Nestle, Epic Games and several other brands said on Wednesday that they will discontinue adverts purchases with the video service. The companies are moved to act as the comment section of several innocent videos of young girls doing gymnastics, playing twister or stretching have become a target of suggestive remarks and inappropriate comments by YouTube users. A Google spokeswoman, Chi He Cho, said YouTube has removed the accounts and channels of people leaving the disturbing comments. The video host also deleted comments that violate YouTube policies and reported illegal activity to the authorities. And so we're going to discuss this in further depth now and join us live to further discuss it is Yaya Cohen, a social media lawyer with Cohen Davis Solicitors. Yaya, well, welcome back to Radio Sputnik. Always nice to chat with you. Hello, Jason. Nice being here. So how much is YouTube at fault in this uh, situation? Was it a right step on the part of companies to uh, break ties with YouTube? I can't really believe that this is the first time this kind of instance has happened. I'm sure there's historical um, events that have happened with regard to this kind of uh, comments within the channel, but uh, maybe this is the first time where really large corporate companies have got involved, such as Nestle. Have you got any further comment on that? Indeed, let's let's stop uh, uh, pretend that uh, Google knew nothing about this uh, type of practice. I will go, in fact, I will go further to say that YouTube, or, or in fact Google, who owns YouTube, is completely responsible for this situation that places young children and even babies at risk. To understand uh, Google's uh, culpability. Uh, we need to look at uh, Google's age policies in relation to YouTube and in relation to Google's uh, mobile phone operating system, Android, which accounts to about 80% of the, of the new mobile phone sales. So starting with YouTube age policy, this is, this is very, very important, and not many people understand this. Uh, Google officially says that YouTube users must be either 18 years old or 13 years old, provided they have a parent's permission to uh, use YouTube. Of course, at the same time, Google promotes on YouTube videos, toys, and other adverts which are targeted at children much, much younger than 13. Some of the videos and adverts are squarely targeted at babies who are as young as one, Google knows very well that huge amount of its users are under the age of 13. It knows this because it targets them with money-making adverts. But despite this, Google has persistently refused to install any form of parental control on either YouTube or on its Android system. In fact, to be able to use an Android mobile phone, uh, or Google says you must be 13 year old, years old, but everybody knows that children are as young as 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 uh, have got mobile telephones, and Google knows this uh, uh, as well. So these children, in order to be able to use the mobile phone, or, or for the parents to allow the children to use the mobile phone, they must log in to the phone by creating a fake Google account, effectively faking the child's age. And Google cannot pretend that it doesn't know that there are children who are using its mobile phone. Now, what happens is because the age is, is because the parents have to put in a, a fake age. Sometimes the children do that. Uh, then the child is then exposed to all sorts of risks on YouTube, including adult content, risks of grooming, uh, pornography, all sorts of things. So. Google is effectively pretending that it has uh, that, that, that it hasn't got any users that are under 13, and therefore it, there's no need to protect the children. Uh, but in fact, it was very well that it's got uh, plenty of those. And, and without parental controls on YouTube and on its Android phone system, Google is exposing those children, our children. Uh, to very serious harm, sexual, emotional, and you know what, sometimes even physical harm. And, and, and Google is hiding behind, behind its over 13 policy, yet it lures children 
to come and watch baby stuff, to be manipulated by YouTubers. Now, those YouTubers, uh, we don't know who they are. They have been paid a huge amount of money, some of them by, by Google, um, to promote the videos. But Google knows that some of these YouTubers are targeting very young children. They sometimes manipulate them. Some of these YouTubers might be sex offenders, might be pedophiles, might be all sorts of people. They are not vetted at all. This is one of the greatest scandals uh, of this century. And I, I, I think that it is absolutely uh, uh, correct and right uh, for those companies to say, you know what, we want nothing to do with you uh, anymore. And, and it is a very courageous thing to do. Well, you've articulated the uh, the problem to the to the core there. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm no tech expert, but, but surely they should be able to police these uh, things more robustly. Uh, from your point of view, how could the inappropriate user activity be regulated? Then, I mean, that's the key question by media platforms, including YouTube. I mean, from this point of view, I mean, they could basically disable all comments, but how they actually police that in terms of different uh, age groups. I'm struggling to think how they can do that, but uh, from your point of view, how would you regulate them? <laughs> well, it, it, is diffi it is difficult to, to restrict age groups when, when, you, when, when Google pretends uh, that all its users are either 18 or over the age of 13. So, so the first thing that needs well, for to be sure, done... Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so the first thing that needs to be done, Google now needs to be compelled to allow users of any age to log into Google accounts and log into the uh, uh, telephone systems, Android and to YouTube. And then Google has to do the right thing, uh, the same thing that uh, Microsoft did and, and Apple and install parental control so parents can restrict the use of certain videos of certain websites on the children's mobile phone. At the moment, a child, because they have to fake their age, they are able to see anything and everything. So yes, removing a few users, a few comments from YouTube, that's great. But this is really uh, uh, pretending that the problem doesn't exist. And it's, it's just not enough. A final question. What legal repercussions then would you say these commentators should face if they are to be found? And, and also, what about the commentators who are t trolls rather than actual paedophiles? What penalty could they face? I mean, there, we have to uh, um, obviously highlight the difference between, between the two as well. I mean, they're not necessarily going to be paedophiles, even them though they've made such comments. I mean, there is a difference. Well, what's your take on that, then? Uh, my take is that, is that first, uh, Google should know who they are, where they come from, uh, and, and it, is, it is not that uh, difficult to tell their IP addresses. Those people tend to be using the same accounts uh, uh, time and time again. Uh, and it really depends where they are, where they are located, uh, in the future, I see uh, a, a global uh, interaction between uh, police forces uh, that uh, will do more to prevent uh, uh, exploitation of, uh, of children. And uh, I would say that uh, we're going to start seeing specific, we're going to start seeing laws, new laws targeting people who simply comment. On, um, on on social media with, with, with comments that are of pedophilic nature. Yara, thank you very much for joining us again uh, with regard to talking about this subject matter, a very sensitive subject matter about YouTube.